we want to welcome you to my lecture today. Of course, uh, today, the focus is going to be on normal distribution. Okay, so uh, before I get started today, I for first uh, want to appreciate uh, uh, students who visited my office hour yesterday. Uh, like I said, I've extended um, my office hours now more on so, um, Tuesday, uh, 10 to 12 noon, and Thursdays, 10 to 12 noon. Uh, in case uh, you need some kind of clarification, well, make sure you visit with me during my office hour. And of course, my office hour is uh, conducted remotely. You can be anywhere in the world to attend my office hours. And I also want to emphasize again that attendance of the lab is very, very crucial. And for those of you who have an uh, issue with the lab, of course, meet with me during my office hour. I walk some students through some kind of, we navigated some uh, kind of uh, ways yesterday on how to get things done. So uh, I need you to visit during the office hour. Okay, so um, we started probability distribution the other time. And of course, I told you that um, before we can have anything to do with data, before we can learn from data, data needs to be collected. And you collect data around a variable. It could be discrete, it could be continuous. And um, because for you to be able to know the probability distribution that work, you need to be able to understand the nature of your variable, whether discrete or continuous. In this class, I've walked you through probability distribution of discrete random variable. And we've also started probability distribution of the continuous type. I remember one of the probability distribution in the continuous type was uniform distribution. I walk you through that in the last class. We want to visit another probability distribution of continuous random variable now that we call normal distribution. So normal distribution is a probability distribution of a continuous random variable. Now in the outline, I'm going to walk you through normal density and up with applications where I'm going to unveil some statistical properties. Then from there, I'm also going to walk you through how do we assess normality, then illustrative uh, examples. Now, let's start with normal distribution. Let me tell you this. In statistical um, uh, world, or even in the research world in general, the uh, normal distribution is an household name. We normally want our data set to be to follow normal distribution, and we got a lot of reason. Number one major reason is because of the shape of normal that I'm actually going to show you. OK, double bear shape, and which captures some natural phenomena like height, income, OK, uh, intelligent quotient, and so on like that. And not only that, because of simplicity of application, we want our data set to follow normal distribution. And you're actually going to see that simplicity when it comes to application. OK, now we're actually going to play with notations when it comes to normal distribution. Notations like 
mu and sigma. Please pay attention. I need you to take a look at these two. The first one is the mean of the probability distribution and the second one, the standard deviation. In, in, in every distribution, we are interested in the center. And that's where the mean is coming in here. And not only that, we are interested in how the rest of the data spread out from the mean. Okay, how the data spread out from the mean. And that's what we call standard deviation. So because of that, I present to you two parameters in a normal distribution, mu and sigma, mean and standard deviation. But at times, because we work with sample data, instead of considering that, we consider, we, we consider this. S with the bar is sample mean, and S, sample standard deviation. Because we're not likely going to work with the totality of data set, then we, we talk about that. Go ahead. How, how, how what? Yeah, in, in, the, in the exam, it's always going to be sample data set. And if we want to mention something that has to do with population, we're going to say, we're going to include that as part of instruction. Does that make sense? So in research world, we don't work with totality of data set. We work with sample. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, Because I've presented to you two parameters in normal distribution, then we need to also understand the state space. Like, what is the possible value the Sarah can take? Take a look at this guy. We're trying to say that mu that represents the Sarah, okay, it can take negative, it can be negative value, it can be zero, it can be positive values. It takes values in real number. But standard deviation, on the other hand, it should be non-negative. When you compute standard deviation value, you have negative, check what you've done, because it can be negative. I just need, to, need you to take a look at the two. Now, here is just to tell you the two parameters in the normal distribution, they are possible. Uh, domain value, like the possible values they can they can have. Now, I want to go into more notation right now because we're going to play with notation a lot. Take a look at this guy. For instance, if my random variable, if, if I have a random variable X, that random variable S can be blood pressure of my patient if I happen to be a doctor. It could be exam score. It could be numbers of hours committed to study and so on like that. If S equal to S uh, is defined as that, then that means X follows, that N is normal distribution. What you have in the parentheses, they are the two parameters for normal distribution, the mean and the standard deviation. So whenever you see something written like that, the very first value in the parentheses pointed in the direction of the center. And the second value, the standard deviation. Does that make sense? And it shouldn't, it, it shouldn't be switched. No way. Don't switch it. The first value is the mean. The second value is the standard deviation. Now, moving away from that, let's say, for instance, I have data set from different settings. I'm going to use uh, this as an example. Uh, maybe John and Jordan wrote exam, math and English. 
from different, and this exam have different grading system. We want to, and we want to make a sense of the performance of each of the students in the two exams. We are not going to work with raw scores directly. The raw scores cannot be compared in that regard because of the fact that they are from different settings, different data settings. If I want to make any meaningful comparison, then I need standardization. Statistics is like a story. And that is going to take us to this guy. I want you to see the connection now. If I have data set for different settings and I want to compare them, it, even if they are from the same distribution or different distribution, okay, it, it, it doesn't make sense comparing raw scores. What we normally do is to standardize. When we standardize, okay, the standardization we actually bring the means of the two different data set into the same center. Like the mean is now going to become zero, the standardization is going to become one. So we use standardization in statistical analysis for comparison of different data set. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, when we talk about normal distribution curve, this is the way it looks. Of course, in this class, of, well, when we're uh, working on graphical summary, we've come across histogram. If you want to know the shapes, and from histogram, we can actually draw this. This is the shape of a normal distribution. Okay, it has a bear shape, symmetric, and not only that, it's centered at the mu. This is, I'm gonna draw something now. That is the center. That is the center. And if that is the center, there's gonna be movement away from the center, but actually right, or to the left. And the movement away from the center is actually, uh, you know, or can be figured out using the number of standard deviation. Now, let me tell you this. There is a difference between standard deviation value and the number of standard deviation. They are not the same. Standard deviation value, oh, what I, what I got when I calculate the standard deviation. But the number of standard deviation is what we call z-score. Does that make sense? Z score gives the number of standard deviation either, I mean, either below the mean, below the center, or above the center. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, when we have a normal distribution, mean and median, they're going to be equal. But the most appropriate measure for Sarah is mean. When we have normal distribution. I need you to take a look at this guy now. We want to look at the effects of changing mu. I talk about uh, different data set the other time. Data set on English scores. Data set on mathematics scores. Data set on science scores. I got two different data set with two with three different grading system, mathematics, English, and science. Now, there's possibility. The average of them will not be the same, even though they follow normal distribution. Take a look at this now. The center here is this. This is the center. This is the center for this guy. That is the center. What happened now? They got different center. We got different data set here from different setting. Okay, so changing the meal causes a shift. 
you can see a shift in the normal curve. Initially, we started with one curve with a center, and we changed the mean. Changing the mean, there's going to be a movement. And this is what this guy is talking about. Now, we can also have changing in standard deviation. I wanted to take a look at this shape. Oh, my God. All of them have the same center. Take a look at that. This is the center. All of them got the same center. But the way they spread out is not the same. Take a look at the shape. The way they spread out is not the same. They got the same mean. But they have different standard deviation. And as you can see, the more flat is the one that is more spread out. This guy here, that is the more flat. More spread out, more standard deviation. Does that make sense? Now, if you take a look at this guy, right? That shrink in. The more the curve shrink in, the lower the standard deviation. Does that make sense? You know what is going to be my joy at the end of the day? <laughs> and I'm actually going to throw a party if that happens. If everybody in this class score A, it's possible to score A. And that's why if you, are, if you get stuck right now, uh, what you need to do is just reach out. That's all. It's very easy. Okay? So take a look at this guy now. Here we are talking about the effect of changing standard deviation, but not changing the mean, not changing the center. Just for you to be able to see how, you know, the spread out and the shrinking. Now, from there, I'm actually going to move to what we call 6895.95 empirical rule. Let me tell you this. A statistical analysis, we, we have identified Sarah, okay, to be this guy. I don't know why we cannot be on the same spot in, in whatever we do in life. Some, they're going to be away from the center. Some, they're going to be to the right. Some, they're going to be to the left. Okay. Now, by empirical rule, we are interested if you take a look at the deviation here and the deviation here, you're actually going to see that that is here is mu plus sigma. Mu plus sigma. How many sigma? Here, one sigma. How many sigma? Minus one sigma. So this can be interpreted as one standard deviation above the center. And this guy, the minus one, one standard deviation below the center. Now, the total area, okay, the total area can be interpreted as one standard deviation within the center. Within the center could be below the center, could be the above the center. And the percentage of data the percentage of data occupying that area will be 68%. But provided the data set follow normal distribution. If data set does, do not follow, let's say we have data set now, and data set did not follow normal distribution, 68% of the observation will not fall within the center. Okay? And that is going to take us to chef chef rule. Here we're talking about empirical rule. Empirical rule applies to normal distribution. Does that make sense? Now, if I want to look at the larger area, two standard deviation away, that would be a larger area, right? The two standard deviation away, we believe 95% of the observation we fall within. Two standard deviation. And we believe or if you now consider um, within three star deviation, majority of the observation will fall within, which is 99.7% of the data set. 
But let me tell you this. All this hold if and only if the distribution of the data set is normal. If it is not, this doesn't hold. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, we want to go into an example now. The time a customer has to wait for their food to arrive at a local restaurant as a normal distribution with a mean of 16 minutes and a standard deviation of four minutes. Maybe somebody have looked at uh, the time they actually need to wait before their food will arrive when they order and they realize it's on a, a, the distribution of minutes because it's going to vary and they look at the data set and they realize that follow normal distribution. And when they follow normal distribution, they, they've, they com, they've computed the two parameters. They know the mean, they know the standard deviation. Now, the mean is 16. As you can see, the mean is 16. But if I want to know the standard deviation here, look at the movement from 16 to 20, movement from 16 to 12. That is looking like a four. Do you see? That's like a four. And that was why they said the standard deviation is four. Now, if you consider, if you consider this part now, I want to award an extra credit now. Do you know the question I want to ask? I love your spirit. I love you guys' spirit. I love that. How many standard deviation is that region? Oh, a lot of people. Say it at the same time. One. I need you to be sincere with yourself. Those who people who say it, one, send me a message for extra credit. Okay, that's going to be one. One standard deviation. If I say one standard deviation, do I need the value of standard deviation? No. No. The value of standard deviation is four here. But that area is one standard deviation. And according to empirical rule, one standard deviation is 68%. That is why we have this. When we want to answer this question, oh sorry, uh, that is why we have this guy here. Look at that question B. What proportion of customer weigh between twelve and twenty? Okay, between twelve and twenty. You see that between twelve and twenty. You're actually going to use a pre rule because that is one standard deviation. That would be sixty-eight percent. And that was why we said it's 0 0.68. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if I want to know the proportion of customers that will wait longer than 16 minutes, longer than 16 minutes, and don't forget, 16 minutes is the, is the center. And don't forget, the total area under the curve is one. When you divide the cell at one into two, what do you have? That would be one out of two. And that was why you got one over two. The probability of S greater than 16 is one over two. Then the probability of S less than or equal to 16 is also going to be one over two. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, another question can be asked. Take a look at the next question. What is the probability that a customer wait between 12 and 24 minutes? Take a look at that. Between 12 and 24 minutes, you may not be able to apply empirical rule directly. Because that, that is an irregular interval. Take a look at that. The distance from 12 to 16 is different from the distance from 16 to 24. For you to be able to apply empirical rule directly, the, the, the distance it has to be equal distance to the center. Does that make sense? Now, in, in that situation, what we're going to do is you can see uh, what happened here. You know, the other time we said the distance from, you know, if you consider this four standard deviation, that's 34%, then 16 to 20 will be another. 34%, which will be 68% together. If I get if I get 34% from here and look at the other distance from 16 to 24, 
So what he's trying to tell me is that the one that get to 24 the other time is like we're considering like maybe two standard deviation. And that was why in each of that, you see what we're doing? We're dividing that by two. Then whatever you get, then we had it. But you know what? I'm going to walk you through a standard way of doing that because it's uh, all the time, most of the time, the empirical rule does not answer probability, some probability questions. Now, how do we do it? Then we can also uh, answer a question, like if you take a look at this, the probability of, you said the shortest 2.5% waiting time are smaller than word value, okay? Then if you look at the picture, it's gonna be smaller than uh, eight in the picture. But let me tell you this, this may be technical because Empricaro does not provide answer to some probability questions directly. Then what do we need to do? What we need to do is to go, to, to start using the idea of standardization. Standardization. Statistics is like a story, okay? The one that will answer the question, the probability question in whatever form, if the random variable follow normal distribution is to use the idea of standardization. Now let me tell you this. Standardization, in, you know, we translate into simplicity. So, you know, sim simplicity of, uh, of computation, you know, like, uh, probability computation because on a normal ground, probability computation with normal is supposed to be complicated. I'm going to say that again. Okay, on a normal ground, computation with probability that has to do with normal, uh, you know, normal it needs to be complicated. But when you standardize, that induces simplicity. Does that make sense? Now I want to I want to walk you into standardization. Now we standardize. For so many reasons, okay, for simplicity, for uh, simplicity of computation, okay, and not only that, for us to compare data set at different, uh, you know, setting. Okay, now, if I'm working with a random variable S that follow normal distribution, maybe the interest to find the probability of S less or equal to A, or another interest. Could be, I want to find the probability of S lie between A and B. Let me give you this example. Uh, I mean, if I happen to be a doctor and I measure the blood pressure of my patient, okay, I, and I, I plot the histogram and I realize that follow normal distribution, then I calculate the mean, I calculate the standard deviation. The moment I know those two parameters, I can answer probability question. Probability question like what? Oh, what is the probability? that the, the blood pressure will be less than a value. When I say what is the probability that it's going to be less than a value, it means I'm interested in what is the percentage of my patient will have a blood pressure less than a value. Or what is the percentage of my patient will have a blood pressure between this value and this value. That is what probability is talking about. Okay. Like I said, we're actually going to use the idea of standardization when we want to answer probability question with normality, okay? Now, how is the standardization going to work? We're going to make use of his score. Oh my God, take a look at that guy. If X represent my random variable, which could be score or height or income, and mu is the mean of all the data set and sigma, is the standard deviation, then Z is actually called Z score, and the meaning of Z score means the number of standard deviation from the center. That's the meaning of Z score. Now, this is how to get a Z score. Okay. Now, if I get my Z score, what is the implication? Please, I need you to pay attention. If you don't understand, ask me question. You pay for the service. You deserve to be served better. I want all highs on the board. In case you don't understand, ask question. Now, maybe this is what I want to find. Take a look at this. X 
follow norma with mu and standard deviation. You know what that means? Let me tell you the way I understand my math, the way I understand my statistics. If I'm just saying x follow n mu sigma, oh my God, it doesn't make sense to me. This is the way I understand it. I understand by interpretation. Now I'm going to say, oh, x, oh, that is the blood pressure. Oh, blood pressure of my patient. Then I, I, I have constructed the histogram and the follow norma. I can see in the histogram. Then the two parameters exist. Mean, which mean I compute the mean, I compute the standard deviation. Does that make sense? Okay, which means if you want to answer probability question about random variable that follow normal, you need to know the mean, you need to know the standard deviation. And that's why they call parameter. Go ahead. Okay, there's possibility. There are two things. It's either we supply the mean as our deviation to you in exam or give you data set to do that. Does that make sense? You know, in this class, we've walked you through how to find the mean and how to find the standard deviation. Have I answered your question? Yeah. Okay, now let's see what I want to find is the probability that the blood pressure is less than Maybe 120, okay? What is it meaning? Oh, I want to find the percentage of my patient that have blood pressure less than that. That's what I mean. Now, I will now standardize. Let me tell you this, without standardizing. Oh my God. You actually going to use the idea of a rigorous calculus. And you know what save us from using calculus right now? Is standardization. Now, instead, we're going to do this. You know what we're going to do? It's going to be x minus mu over sigma. S is going to be A in this case. And after, get, you know, I'm going to get a particular value here, right? The moment I got the value, you know what I'm going to say now? Oh, my God. I've, I've already succeeded in standardizing and what I'm trying to tell the world before standardizing and after standardizing, I'm actually going to have the same equal inequality sign. Before standardizing, it says S less than. After standardizing, it's going to be Z less than a value. Does that make sense to you now? If, you, if it is greater than sign, after standardization, it's still going to be greater than sign. Whatever it is before is, is what it's going to be after. I'm talking about the sign, the inequality sign. Now, I want to show you something right now. Because I'm focusing on less than, it is going to be to the left of the center. And that's why you see this two, these two pictures, they're talking about that. We're supposed to make it a statistical table, checking that. But we're going to make it so bad. Very easy to do in R. Now I'm going to walk you through how to do this in R. Now I want to believe you all know how to get a Z-score. Is there anyone here who doesn't know how to get a Z-score? Go ahead. Oh, you don't know how to get a Z-score? Okay. If you want to get a Z-score, you're going to do this. You, you know you already know the mean? and the standard deviation of your data set, what are you going to put here? Maybe this question say, what is the probability of S less than 100? Right? Um, it's going to be 100 minus the mean that you are giving and the standard deviation, that's then you, you, you're going to get this guy. Does that make sense? Now, after getting that guy now, we are no longer working with the original random variable S. We are going to be working moving forward now with a standardized value. Then we're going to go into R. Now, take a look at this. Uh, take a look at this guy. I want to assume now, let's say, by the time we get our Z, it was negative 2.23. Maybe after subtracting the mean, from the original score divided by standard deviation, let's say you got negative 2.63. How do you check that in R? Now, I've decided from now, 
on, I'm actually going to be showing you the code in class because based on the feedback I got yesterday during the lab, I believe some of you are still struggling with how, but there's no problem, you know, we're just starting. Now, take a look at this. Oh my God, you know what I'm trying to do now? If anybody has to find the probability of Z less than in R, it is go you're gonna write P num, then you put that value in the parentheses. And that will automatically give you this result that you see here. But if you wanna write the P num, they have to be in low, has to be in lowercase. If you, if you put an uppercase, it's not, it's gonna uh, flash an error. Does that make sense? Okay, P norm is a code in R if you want to find the probability of a Z score or less. Whether less or less or equal, you know, for continuous, less than, and less or equal, they are the same. Does that make sense? Okay, any question about that? If I were you, when you get, when you leave this class today, go back to your R, type P norm into negative 2.63 and see whether it's going to give you 0 0.00043. How do we do greater than? I'm gonna to go to greater than now. How do we do greater than? Now, take a look at this. You know, greater than, we can apply the law of complement, right? The greater than is gonna be one minus less than, right? Okay, so if I wanna, anytime you see greater than, and you want to, you actually want to compute that in R, always write one minus P norm. Don't forget, your P norm has to be, all, all of them have to be lowercase. P norm, okay, into the value, 2.63. Okay, if you, if you type that into R, it will automatically give you the result. And this is the shape, you know what you're seeing here? It's, it's uh, when you draw, when you draw that. Okay, now you know how now now you know how to do this guy right now. Of course, using R, that would be super cool. This is just going to be go ahead. Okay. When I when I standardize. When I have a Z, my Z can be anything. It could be negative or positive. Depending, don't forget, you are subtracting. Uh, if you go back uh, to the, look at the formula. If if the mean is bigger than the that particular value, then it's going to be negative. Does that make sense? If the mean, because you are subtracting the mean. For instance, let's say this is 1,005. 1,005, if this guy is 2,000, the other thing is going to be negative. Does that make sense? Okay, so the Z score could be negative or positive. There's no problem. Whatever it is, when you go to R, indicate that. Okay, whatever it is, if you take a look at this guy, negative 2.63, because it's less than, I'm going to write P norm in parentheses, negative 2.63. If it is positive, I'm going to write it that way. Does that make sense? If it is greater than, then I'm going to do one minus P norm. Does that R is so easy? Does that make sense? Now, you know, you know, the, you know the one. Um, um, the uh, I, I want to talk about this guy now. Take a look at question D. How do we find between? He said, find the proportion of the distribution that falls between negative point nine seven. And 1.31. Now, I need you to pay attention now. Initially, this was, this 0.97 and 1.31 were not the original values. You know what happened initially? We, we, we actually, initially, we have two different numbers, X. And they, they standardized this value 
Maybe they got this one. They standardized another value. Maybe the, maybe, uh, the doctor want to find what is the probability that the blood pressure of my patient would be between 100 and 120. Between 100 and 120, I will standardize 100. I will standardize 120. Does that make sense? And you know how to do the standardization. Now, you now arrive at this guy. If you arrive at this guy, you fall first, pick, start with a bigger, bigger value. What is the bigger value? 1.31 is a bigger value. Now, the bigger value, do you see that? You write that, the probability that Z less than the bigger value minus, minus the probability that is less than the smaller value. All the time, all the time, if you want to find the probability that is between two numbers, start with the upper bound and write that it is less than the upper bound minus it's less than the lower bound. Now, if I want to run this in R, oh my God. If I want to run this in R, this is going to be P num, parenthesis 1.31, minus P num, parenthesis negative 0.97. R will automatically give me the answer. Does that make sense? That is how to do it. Okay. Now, take a look at this. If you if you if you try this today, try this guy. You know, if you want to do that in R, what are you going to write? P num parenthesis 0 0.18, right? And that will give you 0 0.57. And you know the meaning of that? We're trying to say, okay, you know, 57 percentile corresponds to a 0 0.18. That's exactly what we mean. So it means, uh, they say, what value mark the 57 percentile? It means 57 percent of the data, of the standardized data, have value less than one, uh, 0 0.18. Okay. Now, what are the steps for calculating normal probability? Draw a picture. Start, uh, convert your X to a, a Z score. And the three say use a table. But here we're going to be using how. Does that make sense? Okay. And if you, you know, you're using how, you remember I said P norm. Then at times, do you know we can have a probability value? And they want us to figure out X. Maybe you already have a probability value. They want us to figure out X. What are we going to do? Then I'm going to tell you what to do. Okay. And this is what to do. Take a look at this. Initially, you know your Z equal to this, right? What am I looking for? I'm looking for X. Solve for X. <laughs> when you solve for X, you remember equation in high school? Okay, I want to solve for X. When you solve for X, what am I going to have? I'm actually going to have this. Which means, if I want to define my X, I need the mean. I need the Z-score value. Then, the standard deviation. That's what I need. But you know what? I want to walk you through an example where we're actually going to go from original value of X to standardization, to checking in and out, to taking decision. Are you ready? Now, let's take a look at this. Let X equal to SAS score and suppose that SAS scores are known to follow normal distribution with the mean that and standard deviation that. Now the first question, write down the distribution, of course. This is the distribution. How do I know? Because they've already told us. S follow normal. The mean is 1026 and the standard deviation is that. That's all. Now, the second question. I need you to pay attention to B now. Because the Z score will enable us to compare your score. Like if you write exam, the Z score will enable you to compare your score with the average of others. Okay? With the average of the old score. Now, calculate and interpret the Z score for a SAP performance of 1,100. Please pay attention. Pay attention. 
this is a raw data. The, for this particular person, score 1,100. We want to calculate the z-score for this person. Why are we calculating the z-score? We want to know how many standard deviation away is from the center of score. So that this guy will be able to see, oh, I'm below the average. Oh, I'm above the average. That is what we're doing here. Who doesn't understand that? That's what we're doing here. This is how to standardize. You know what 0 0.35 means? Oh, this score, okay, is above the Sarah by 0 0.35, which means slight above the Sarah. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if I now want to know in my class, what is the percentage of students that score less than this guy that score less than 1000 the percentage of students that score less than 1001 mean find the probability of s less than 1001 which is going to be the same as find the probability that z z is less than 0.35 does that make sense now it's going to take us to this now okay take a look at this this is what we're looking for. This is what we end up doing. After standardization, you can see the inequality sign remain the same. What are we going to do next? When we get to that junction, go to our P norm of 0 0.35. That will give you 0.6368, which means this is about 64% of the students okay, actually score less than 1,100. Now, question D, before I go today, question D, because we're still going to continue with this material. Now, question D, what is the probability that a randomly selected student receive a score of at least 820? At least. That would mean greater or equal. For continuous random variable, greater or equal is the same thing as greater. Does that make sense? Less or equal is the same thing as less than. Now, at least now, mathematically, you actually want to interpret that as this guy. But you know what you need to do now? That guy is a raw score. You need to standardize 820. Now, standardizing that, that's exactly what we're doing here. Where you do 820 minus the mean divided. Of course, we all know, look at that. The score is less than the center. The Z score is expected to be negative. Now, when I have this guy now, Okay, now that we translate into that. Oh my God, the probability of S greater than 820 is the same thing as the probability of Z greater or equal to minus 0.99. And what am I going to do at this junction in R1 minus P norm in parentheses, negative is 0 0.99. That will automatically give you the, the result. I'm actually going to stop here today. Is there any question? Okay, make sure you all stay safe and have a lovely weekend. Bye for now, everyone. Yeah. What was that? I didn't, I didn't reply to that. Oh, uh, let me call for.